Hello everyone, Chosen One here with part two of my Super Carrier Guide. If you haven't seen the first part or my guide on fighter mechanics, I highly recommend you watch those videos first. Links for them can be found in the video description. In this video, I'm going to be going over the basic fitting theory behind Super Carriers, covering fits for travel, as well as solo and small gang. I will also go over the basics of how to safely use your Super in solo and small gang combat. When going over the fits, I'm going to be using the application PIFA and the link to the program can also be found in the video description. Before I start, a quick disclaimer. Do not mistake this video for actual experience. One should only use this as a starting point for getting into super combat, not as the definitive guide. Before dropping on Tranquility, try everything out on the test server or use a regular carrier on Tranquility. Due to their cost, people will go to extreme ends to kill super carriers, and the bulk of the burden is on you as the pilot. They only have to be lucky once, and you have to be lucky all of the time. First up, fitting. It is important to note that there is not a single right fit for a super carrier. Supers have very good slot layouts, packing in tons of utility across your low, medium, and high slots. As such, there will be large variations in what one can do. Supers also have large cargo and fleet hangar bays, where you can and should store backup mods and alternate fittings. With that being said, although there is no singular correct fit, for supers, there are 100% wrong fits for supers. Fits that will get you killed. So first on the docket, travel fits. Travel fits are going to be almost identical across all the races of supers, as when moving you are not interested in tank so much as you are interested in mobility. On screen I'm going to be putting up an example fitting for a Nyx. Starting with the rigs, your best bet are going to be either hyperspatials or low friction nozzle joints. Hyperspatials allow you to warp faster, decreasing the probability you will be probed down while in warp. Low friction joints increase agility, allowing you to align out and warp off faster. Because rigs cannot be unfit without destroying them, you may not want to remove your standard armor or shield rigs when moving. This will save you money, but it will add danger to your move, so that trade-off is a decision you will have to work out for yourself. Personally, I did not remove my regular rigs and replace them with the moving rigs, but I also only moved my super through low activity areas. If you were buying a super and a Freeport Keepstar, you should definitely at least get the Tech 1 rigs for moving, and keep whatever you want to change to in your cargo, changing to them once you arrive at your final destination. For low slots, fit inertial stabilizers and hyperspatials. You are limited to three hyperspatials in your lows, so keep that in mind when designing your fit. The three low slot hyperspatials functions exactly the same as the rig, increasing your warp speed. Inertial stabilizers will increase uh, agility, decreasing align time overall. So I fit three hyperspatials and three inertial stabilizers on my next. For my final slot on the next, I put a damage control as a bonus from any additional mobility module is negligible. You could also put a drone damage amplifier so that if you get tackled, you would be able to kill tackle faster. For the hell, I would recommend three inertial stabilizers and two hyperspatials and a 2-2 setup on the wyvern. A common error I see in low slot mods for supers is when people fit capacitor power relays to their ships. Please do not do this. The idea is that they will help you passively generate cap while cloaked. This is not in and of itself a bad idea, but as long as you got to your safe spot without being probed, you can sit there cloaked for however long you want safely regenerating cap. As always, it is better to take your time and be safe rather than to try and rush. Additionally, with the introduction of capital capacitor boosters, quickly generating capacitor can be done with better slot efficiency. One low slot module that should never be fit are warp core stabilizers. No number of stabs will keep a hit from holding you down or give you bubble immunity. If fit, they are just wasted slots. After those two mods, you can really fit whatever you want into your remaining mids. I generally like cap rechargers or even more cap boosters. One thing, however, you should avoid are capital cap batteries. Although they will raise your recharge rate, they will also raise your total capacitor pool. This is normally fine, but is actually bad with how jumping works. In order to jump, you need to get to 75% of your capacitor. On my Nix, which you can see on screen now, simulated by a PIFA, you can see that without a cap battery, my cap is at 101,000 gigajoules. So 75% of that would be just under 76,000 gigajoules. With a cap battery, my total capacitor would increase to 122,000 gigajoules. As such, the amount of cap required for jump react would be 91,000. As the amount of capacitor you get from injecting cap boosters is based solely on the cap booster you're using, not on the capacitor pool of your ship, 
using a mod like a cap adder we will only make it harder for you to get to total jump cap. When flying a super, you really want to be aiming to get to jump cap as quickly as possible so that if something bad happens, you are able to just get right out of the situation. For mid slots, you're going to want at least one, if not more, capital capacitor boosters. The second you land on grid, you should be activating them to try and get to jump cap, which is 75%. The next most important mid is a prop mod. So you have three basic options for your prop mod. You have a 500mn MWD, you have the 50,000 MN MWD, and then you have the 10,000 MN Afterburner. So which one is right for you? So the basic idea behind having a prop mod on your ship is that if you activate it one cycle, you will be able to get into warp immediately once it decycles. This is useful as you will almost always enter warp faster doing a single pulse of the prop mod than just simply clicking a line and then warp to. So on screen now, I'm going to be showing a demonstration of the difference between each of these three types. Keep in mind as well that I'm going to be doing this with two different fits. So one fit is a Nyx with dual plates, and the other one is with eye stabs, so something more can do a travel or solo combat fit. So starting with the plate fit, the capital MWD, that is the 50,000 MN MWD, you get to warp in about 22 seconds, overheating it for one cycle. For the capital afterburner, you get to warp in 18 seconds. And with the 500mn MWD, you get to warp in 26 seconds if you run it for one cycle, or 21 if you run it for two cycles. So, does this mean that the capital AB is definitively the best? Well, no. To see why, we need to look at a fit that doesn't have really low inertial modifiers, like a plated Nyx does. So, on screen now is going to be the comparison on an eye stab Nyx. So this is a Nyx that's base agility is going to be significantly higher than the last fit. So for the capital MWD and the capital afterburner, the times to warp out are exactly the same. This is because it's, it still has to go through one entire cycle before it can get the ship into warp. However, where the difference arises is with the 500 MN MWD. Now, when you overheat it, you're able to get into warp in one cycle. This drops your time to warp from 26 seconds all the way down to 12, making it by far the fastest method to get into warp. So, where does all this data leave us? For moving, the capital MWD is by far the worst. I'll get into its combat uses later, but it's very niche. The capital afterburner will get you into warp fastest if your ship is not agile. So if you're moving a plated Nyx or an Aeon, or even some Wyverns, depending on how your fit is, uh, it will be your best bet in, to get into warp fastest. For moving anything else, uh, the 500mn MWD is going to get you into warp fastest by a wide margin. As a general rule of thumb, though, cap afterburners are for combat, and 500mn micro warp drives are for moving. For high slots, the most important module you can fit while moving is a cloak. If you take away only one thing from this video, it should be this. Fit a cloak. After that, I'd recommend fitting the ECM Burst Super Weapon. Although there are ships other than Hicks that can hold you on field, Hicks are the most common, and the ECM Burst is a good way to break the lock of multiple Hicks, which would allow you to warp out. After the ECM, another good option for your highs is the Burst Neutralization Projector, which drains its cap of all ships in the vicinity of the Burst. Functionally, what this means is that if you are tackled by Hicks, you launch the Newt Projector on yourself, and hopefully it would Newt out the Hicks enough that they would drop point due to lack of capacitor and you would be able to warp or jump out. After burst projectors, I would recommend heavy energy newts. Because of the Sigurdis effect on energy neutralizers, do not use the capital newts when you are traveling. Heavy newts can cap out hicks, allowing you to warp off almost instantly, whereas capital newts would have almost no effect on the cap's ability of a hick. On screen now is a simulated devoter fit that is pretty standard and you're going to see in your day-to-day -day combat. So you can see when I apply capital newts to it that the capacitor on the hick barely budges. Like it's still cap, very much so cap stable. However, when I switch to heavy energy newts, the cap's ability drops to only 36 seconds, almost a cycle time of a hick point, meaning that if the hick is flipped slightly differently or the pilot doesn't have great cap skills, the hick may not even be able to get cap from any friendly logi that is on the field, meaning that it will drop point the second that its cycle ends. And just to follow that up, an in-game demonstration. So here I am using a capital newt with my super to newt out 
a devoter, and you can see that the devoter cap barely budges. But when I switch to heavy energy new, the devoter's cap goes down much more significantly. As a general tip, if you are ever tackled by multiple hicks, make sure you are not shooting and newting the same one. Shoot one, newt the other. Your objective is not to necessarily kill them, but to force them to drop point so they can receive remote assistance. The final high slot module that I'd recommend while moving is a smart bomb. Due to the large size of a super, the smart bomb radius is very large. Smart bombs are most useful when moving in nullsec, where they can be used to clear bubbles that you may be stuck in. However, they can also be used to deal some damage to any hicks and dictors that may be on you. Other modules you could fit while moving is a Sino, but this is highly situational. Sino will lock your super in place for 10 minutes, so if you plan on activating one once tackled, you best have enough friendly logi to save you from whatever you expect to be tackled by. If you're moving solo, don't even bother fitting a Sino, as that will essentially doom you to death. Other modules that some people may be wondering why I do not recommend fitting are network sensor arrays or fighter support units. These modules are mandatory for combat fitting, but when travel fitting, they really do not provide that much utility. If you're caught while moving solo, chances are that you're not going to have the capability to kill what is on you. As such, your best bet is to just try and remove their ability to keep you held on grid. One final note before moving on from travel fits, due to the capital changes, the biggest threat for a moving super is no longer a hick, but rather a tackle rourke. As such, you might wonder why I have not addressed any of my advice towards dealing with them, if they are such a large problem. This is because, as a lone mover, you will most likely be unable to deal with them no matter how you fit. On screen is a typical fit tackle rourke. 5 tech 2 heavy scrams with 6 points each is 30 points of scram, more than the 26 strength required to hold a super. The 3.71 million EHP it would take a super with 25,000 DPS 148 seconds to kill it, assuming perfect application and no remote caps to the rourke, both of which are very unlikely. 148 seconds is a very long time and is often longer than the amount of time it takes to kill a super. Unfortunately, there really is no real advice I can give to shedding tackle on a rourke if the rourke has you pointed. Your best bet is to try and force the rourke to light a sino, and then burn the 12 kilometers out of the scram range before you die. Before moving on, I often find it's quite useful to learn from other people's mistakes. As such, I'm going to put up some super losses that I found on Zcom. All these fits are awful, uh, so take some time now, try and figure out what's wrong. If you need more time, pause the video, and we'll get back into it. All right, so this is the first one I'm going to be showing you. You can see it was killed by Ivana, and right away, you should notice that it has six eye stabs in the lows. With stacking penalties, this is really inefficient, and after the third one, about after that, it's not going to be getting any sort of extra bonus to its uh, agility. Also, it would be much better suited if it had three of the prototype hyperspatials, but then it could warp faster. It also has three regs all about hyperspatial. You're probably better off moving some of those to ox nano uh, thrusters for the agility in the lows. For the mids, it has two cap rechargers. Uh, it would be much better if these were capital cap boosters. Um, just you get so much more cap in such a short period of time. Uh, the 500 mn micro warp drive is actually a pretty good choice, but uh, there's so much else wrong with this fit that it just wasn't able to save it. Uh, the tracking links also are okay. It would you know help with the super's application for Hicks. However, as you can see, it wasn't even tackled with Hicks. It was tackled with Orcs, so it wasn't even going to make any bit of a deal. For the highs, it has links, and I'll get into why links are terrible in a bit. But g generally, they're really bad for moving because they give you an aggression timer, so that's really not what you want when you're moving. You want to be able to tether immediately, you want to be able to cloak immediately, and activating links will prevent you from doing both of those. And at least as a cloaking device. Uh, another problem is it has these missing high slots. Like Tech 2 newts really aren't all that expensive. You could really easily go pick some of those up and just throw them in the highs just to give you, you know, a little bit more utility in terms of newting out any hicks that have you. Once again, this guy wasn't tackled by hicks, but, you know, if he had that, it may have been a little bit better. All right, so here's the second bad super fit. It's a Hell. Oh, once again, it was killed by Ivana. Uh, and right away, you should notice that it is not making good use of slot efficiency. And it has way too many capacitor power relays. Like, look at all these. And then in the mids, it's all capped recharges. So, yeah, it's basic 
cap recharge is going to be really fast, but that's really only a small part of moving a super. It's not making use of any of its lows or any of its mids for any of the utility that you can fit into a super. The lows really should be fitting eye stabs and the hyperspatials. Uh, the mids, you should be fitting at least a prop mod and a cap booster. This is very reminiscent of a legacy fit, something prior to the 2016 capital balance update before capital cap boosters are introduced. Like the previous one that we just went over, it's not taking use of all of its high slots. It has a cloaking device, which is good, but, you know, it's still missing, you know, five high slots. You could be fitting newts. You could be fitting smart bombs. Really anything else. You could be fitting uh, burst ECM projectors up there. Your list goes on of stuff you could be fitting in those highs. Leaving them empty is totally stupid. All right, and so here's the third bad travel fit that I found. So, like the first one, it has too many eye stabs. Really, three of these at least should be traded out for uh, hyperspatials. It's just the bonus it gets from having seven versus three is it's just not worth it at all. For the mids, it has cap recharger ones and a meta uh, cap battery. If you're fitting a super, like, please, at least get tech two. Ideally, you're getting faction, but, like, having tech one and then a meta, it's just, it's it's an embarrassment. Uh, it also has a capital shield booster. Kind of confused about why you would fit that. Seems like a reminiscent of a, uh, a ratting fit. That will never help you. Don't fit capital shield boosters. Don't fit active tank to your, your supers when moving them. It, it's not going to help. Uh, this guy at least had a micro warp drive, and he would be able to one cycle that with his fit. But, uh, I mean, it just would not enough. And also, like the previous fit, missing five high slots. So only has a cloak. At least he factioned that. But, I mean, still, five empty highs. That's a lot of utility he could have had that he just didn't. So now on to combat fitting. When fitting for combat, you have a lot of different options depending on where you are dropping, fleet size, and the organization of your group. For the purpose of this video, I'm not going to go over the fits that the large null blocks would use, such as Goons, Test, or NC. If you're in one of those organizations, you should just use the designated doctrine fit. For the smaller fleet combat fits, you have options. If dropping in low sec, you can focus more on tank without worrying as much about mobility, as bubbles are not a concern. When fitting tank, the question of buffer versus resists often comes up. As a minimum, you should have at least two capital plates slash capital shield extenders fit. If your organization cannot put many facts on field, you may actually be better served by fitting three or more extenders to your super. You will have much worse resists, meaning that remote reps are not strong, but the extra buffer will put your overall EHP higher than a balanced fit. In practice, this allows you to take more damage than a two-plate slash capital shield extender fit would. Moving on from tank to lows in general. The first main low slot we have are damage mods. Generally, two to three is going to give you the best results for your slot efficiency. Any more than three drone damage amplifiers and your damage increase is negligible while also gutting your utility or tank. For shield supers, you have the luxury of being able to fit damage mods and mobility mods in your lows without hampering your tank. As such, eye stabs and hyperspatials can be really good choices. If you want to focus purely on tank, for a shield super, power diagnostic systems and damage controls are the way to go. For mids, it depends on if you are dropping in low sec or null sec. Within low sec, you can take a cap AB or 500MN MWD, depending on what will make you align faster. Overall, though, I would still recommend the AB because a single scram will shut down your MWD, even though you'd still be able to warp. If in null, a dual prop fit with a capital MWD can be worthwhile, as it allows you to burn out of bubbles you may be stuck in. Other worthwhile mids are cap injectors, cap batteries, drone navigation computers, and omnidirectional tracking computers. The difference between drone navs and omnidirectional tracking computers is that drone navs make your drones go faster, while tracking computers let them apply their damage better. So, if you think that you're going to have your drones flying around back and forth, back and forth a lot, uh, in an op, generally, if you're doing structure bashes, nav comps are going to be your best bet. But if you're just doing more general PvP, the omnidirectional tracking computers are going to be your best bang for the buck. If you expect to be shooting subcaps, I would strongly recommend it take, taking at least one tracking computer, as it will increase your applied DPS massively. Finally, we have high slots. The two mandatory mods that you want are the network sensor array and fighter support units. For CIDR support units, I recommend no more than three. Like traveling, newts, 
Earth's projectors and smart bombs are all good options as well. Another high slot module that is sometimes fit are command bursts. In general, as I said earlier, I would not recommend fitting these to your high slots. Although you can fit them to your supers, they will not be as strong as links from a dedicated boosting tech for your command ship, and running the links will give you a combat timer, preventing tethering at citadels or jumping through a stargate. Moving on to solo slash nano fits, they share many of the same elements that travel fits have, maximizing agility and warp speed at all costs over tank. As such, your lows should be eye stabs first and one to three hyperspatials second. After those, depending on the number of lows you have left, you can take damage mods or a damage control unit. For your mids, I would recommend taking a 500 MN MWD. If you're dropping a null sec, once again, I would recommend taking a capital MWD, so dual propping your ship. After that, cap injectors, cap batteries, and tracking computers are your friends. If you feel like fitting tank, you can fit a capital shield extender and involves, but keep in mind, if you're dropping solo, that little bit of extra EHP will likely not save you from whatever you're tackled by. For hives, I recommend a cloaking device, network sensor array, and fighter support unit. Other hives that are good are heavy energy nukes and smart bombs. Once again, links can be fitted. However, unlike when dropping with fleet, they do actually have a little bit more use. As the name would imply, uh, running a solo super means you do not have the luxury of having dedicated link ships. So putting them into your utility high slots can be useful as the skirmish links especially can make you align faster and let you warp off and bounce around safe spots until your jump react is done or you are capped up. So, like with the travel fits before, I'm now going to go over some super losses so you can see some good and bad fitting in practice. Alright, so starting off with a bad fit. Um, as you can see, the most striking thing right off the bat, uh, Tech 1 rigs. Uh, please don't fit Tech 1 rigs to your super once you start dropping it in combat. It can be expensive, each rig is about 300 mil, but it's definitely worth it. Second, he has several drone nav computers too when he was dropping on other enemy caps. It would be much better off if he had a second uh, tracking link. It would really help his apply DPS. Uh, the third major problem are the fact that he's running bursts. Now this man, in the context, you can see he was in part of a fleet and he was running bursts from his mix. If you're going to be in a fleet combat like that, just spend the time, get someone in damnation. Don't put the links directly on your super, please. At a cloaking device, which is all right, but be much better served by having an energy nuke to help shed some of the tackle. In the mids, has a capital cap booster one. Please don't be fitting meta mods like that to your super. Really, just why? Uh, on and the lows, he has true Sancha energized adaptives. Uh, once again, in terms of like trying to save money, fitting it really cheaply. Don't don't try and cut corners when fitting your next to actually start dropping in combat. Uh, a-type adaptives aren't all that much when it comes to the cost of a super, and they're definitely worthwhile. It's also very questionable that someone would decide to shell out the money for a 300 mil damage control, but then not want to put any more onto the enams. So for the next fit, this is a hell, and this is actually a pretty good fit. So this guy decided to go with a little bit more gank than tank, so he's running three drone damage amps. Um, so he only has space for one hyper and one inertial stabilizer, but that's fine. And that's a good sort of balance of lows for your super. He went all three hyperspatials in the uh, rigs as well. So he can get that warp speed uh, without having to fit more, uh, which is also pretty uh, reasonable. You can see he was dropping in null, you know. So he goes ahead and he fits the capital MWD. So if he did get caught in bubbles, he could burn out uh, running a capital cap injector. Um, as well to cap up after jumping in, uh, 500 MNMWD for that fast align, and then some tank. Uh, the, my only sort of criticism of this would be that he should have fit uh, some uh, tracking mods in his mids, as they would have that would have allowed him to uh, track the enemies better. Uh, as this much tank really isn't going to help when you're tackled. If you're going to die either way. Uh, if you have two CSCs versus one, uh, but if you're able to clear that tackle, you might actually be able to get out. For the highs, there's a cloaking device and an MSA, both very good. Uh, an Abyssal Energy new, once again, nice to need out Hicks. Uh, dropping in Null, he has a Smart Bomb, smart, able to Smart Bomb off Bubbles, and two FSUs. So overall, not really any complaints about this fit. It's a very well done, just a little, would have liked to see tracking in the mids rather than tank. 
All right, and so for the final fit, this is not what I would consider a correctly fit Harmer Super. So starting with the lows, you want A-type adaptives with one explosive covering that hole, two drone damage amps getting that nice uh, mix of tank and gank, tech two rigs. Uh, I think that a tech two, uh, third tech two pump is going to get you more EHP overall than the uh, thermal. However, it's still not that bad. Uh, it can definitely work. For the mids, he's running two tracking links, which is uh, what you want for this, and one drone nav. So he gets a very good mix of speed and tracking for his fighters, which will allow him to kill Hicks. So 10,000 MN AV, another good mid slot, especially considering he has two plates, so he wouldn't be able to get that one cycle warp from a MWD. So the AB is definitely where you want to be. Final mid of a cap booster, very smart. Uh, just get capped up after jumping in. So in the highs, he has a Sino, Warp Disruption, Burst Projector, and an NSA, Cloak, and two FSUs. So the FSUs are good, as well as the Cloak and the NSA. Where I think the problem starts to be is when we start looking at his final two highs, running a Warp Disruption, Burst Projector, and a Sino. So first with the Warp Disruption, Burst Projector, you can see he died in low sec. So that's you can't use that in low sec. You can only use the Energy new and ECM. So if he wanted to run a Burst Projector in the high, one of those would have been much better. Instead, he ran the warp disruption. Uh, likely, this is a holdover from using a null sec, and he was jumping back. But, I mean, you should really be thinking about this before you uh, sort of go around jumping your super. Second high uh, is the Sino. Once again, if he's moving by himself, even with a small fleet, you know, behoove of him to have a backup Sino ship that's not his next, so that he could free up that high slot for something like uh, an energy new or a smart bomb. In this case, it would be an energy new would be the best. All right, and one last thing in this video before I close it out. I am going to go over a drop that I had a couple of weeks ago, kind of go over the good sides and the downsides to my drop, because I oftentimes feel that a visual example can work better more than just me rambling on for 20 to 30 minutes. So starting off, I'm going to be showing the prep work that I do before any drop. So the first thing, I'm doing is checking the jump routes on Dotland. Dotland is a free program and it works a lot better than the in-game map function. Uh, honestly, this should be integrated into the client, but unfortunately it isn't, so I have to tab out. So I'm able to check to see that I can hit the target system that they're in with my super carrier and make sure that my uh, regular capitals and other systems can also hit the target system. So the next thing I'm doing is I'm looking at their Z-Kill to see their characters that we got eyes on to make sure that they're not baiting for a drop like this to happen. One of the worst things you can do is not do any intel work on the people you're dropping on and have it turn out they are baiting. So to do this, I'm just using Z-Kill, searching their names, looking through their kills, seeing what they've killed stuff with, looking at their capital kills and losses, just to get a feel. Um, after about a quick cursory glance, it's pretty easy to tell whether or not someone is uh, a hard bait or not. And these guys, I can tell pretty quickly, are just roaming around and are most likely not baiting for some larger entity. All right, so right as the drop starts, I make a few mistakes. First thing I should have been doing is turning on my network sensor array and mining out. Instead, I start trying to lock up some of their cruisers without turning that on, which really delays my damage application. So definitely a mistake there and kind of sloppy in general. Regardless, we start chewing through their cruisers and battle cruisers. The next mistake that I make is a little bit more minor. I'm just not really making sure that my guns are cycling all my fighters, as well as I have a lot of downtime on my newts as I'm broadcasting targets and sort of coordinating the fleet. Another overall problem that I had with this drop is that I didn't continuously run my cap booster when I jumped in. That being said, it was pretty clear after the initial drop that these guys really weren't that much of a danger and it wasn't that big of a necessity for me to do that. However, that sort of sloppiness can end up getting you killed in more sticky situations. All right, everyone, uh, that's the end of the video. Thanks for watching. If you have more questions about supers, capitals, or any of this other sort of end game content in general for EVE Online, please don't hesitate to ask. Although I have some of my own ideas for making new videos, if there's a topic that a lot of people want me to cover, I'd be more than happy to do that. Until the next one, fly safe.